All right, Evan Bevins, it's September 2024. We're about ready to get into a new season of Marvel Snap. We want to talk about the previous season. We want to talk about our experiences with the last season. We're also going to, we got a top five. So real quick, let's talk about last season. We just got out of Young Avengers. Uh, the season started August 6th of 2024. And our first card was Kate Bishop. She was the card that came with the season pass. And it, she was a two cost, three power on reveal. Add two arrows to your hand. Evan, you got the season pass, right? Uh-huh. You've been consistently getting these season passes, which is great. Now I have somebody I can talk to about the premier card. What do you think about Kate Bishop? Oh, she's like a Swiss Army knife, kind of like Nico. You can put her in just about any any deck now. Obviously, with Nico, there's some spells you want more than others. Kate, I'm pretty much always crossing my finger for a Pym arrow and an Acid arrow. Oh, Acid um, arrows. I mean, yeah, the the traditional arrow works okay and also renders the original Hawkeye completely useless, which is something Kate Bishop never managed to do in the comics. <laughs> keep having two Hawkeyes. That's going to be the next thing in a few years. Marvel and DC are going to have three people running around with the same code name because they've been oh, doing yeah. two for so long, it's getting old. Right. I think Ant-Man is still better than the Pym Arrow because he gets a plus four and the Pym Arrow only gets a plus three. Basically, I'm, I'm, unless you just like Clint Barton, I'm not sure why you're running Hawkeye these days. They might need to, to change him around a little bit. I use Kate in a lot of decks. Uh, instantly in my collector deck, Collectosar, anything that adds cards to my hand. I started using my Arishim deck. I, I remember I said last time that I was going to try to have a deck just of all cards that fit well in any deck and make that my bounty hunting deck just to put whatever cards for the bounty in there. Then I figured I'd just do it with Arishim. Yeah. So I, so my Arishim decks adapt to the bounties because who, who cares if the cards don't work, you might not even get them. Right. Espe- especially now that th- their solution to Arishim, which I kind of like, they thought it, it was a little too good, so they gave you more cards. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I did my Arisham deck I refer to as Type O Negative. O Neg the Prober. And I That's only right. know that. I know that because of you. <laughs> oh, always <laughs> testing out. Actually, no, he's not testing because there's another one named Zuron the Tester. I mean, when the Celestials are sitting around picking their names, it's like, oh, Zuron the Tester. I'm going to be O Neg the Prober. Isn't that the same as testing? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's like no, you're going to a different plan. So yeah, it's type O negative. And then I also put her in my Thanos deck because another card we're going to talk about went in there. So I figured why not have some more one cost cards that don't start out on my deck. Yeah. Kate Bishop was not one of my favorite cards to play against. It was, although, you know, it wasn't like she was a game breaker. She was one of those cards that once I saw her pop up, all I was doing was just print, please no acid, no acid arrows, please. Please She's don't the acid exact arrows. opposite of what you do when you have her. <laughs> right. So, yeah, the acid arrows drove me nuts. I, I don't think I ended up with her in an Arishim deck or not. I did the same thing you were talking about. I think I was taking Arishim and doing the same thing with the bounties, too, because I was like, well, shoot, just throw them in there. But for a while, I wasn't very lucky with the Arishim deck. I kept losing and losing. Oh, geez, what is going on? It's the fact that I'm actually picking cards that don't work well together in this deck that is not supposed to be make a co- cohesive sense yeah. anyway. I don't know. But yeah, Kate and Nico are good in that deck because they can work with a lot of different cards. They usually try to have Sunspot in there to soak up the extra energy. M'Baku, because good chance you won't draw him. Or right. you might get two M'Bakus in the same deck, neither <laughs> of which draw, both of whom jump in at the end. That happened once. Um, and then Mockingbird, of course. Mm-hmm. Easy, to, easy to activate her. And I think I even put Sarah in there just to be a real jerk with Loki, too. Oh, wow. Oh, my I mean, gosh. At that point, you've got way more energy than you need. But. Yeah. All right. Moving on to Marvel Boy. Three cost, two power. After each turn, give three of your one cost cards plus one power. And I sprung for this one. I think when we were talking last, Marvel Boy had showed up and we had a chance to play and use Marvel Boy. As far as the season goes, my use of Marvel Boy kind of took a back seat. I like him, but I was focusing on there, there were a couple of things that happened. Number one, they introduced alliances, which you know mm-hmm. we took we took advantage of. And then right after we started talking alliances, the leagues hit. So I was trying to be like, okay, I, I'm in a league now. I want to try and get these couple bonuses at the top if I can stay towards the top. And then 
I was like, okay, I need to use my best deck. I can't be experimenting with Marvel Boy here and trying to make him work in a deck. So I did like watching him get used, and I knew that it was going to be a bunch of one-cost people. Uh, so when I was running in the Alliance and I needed to destroy for some of the bounties, it was so fun. I'd just keep my Killmonger back. And Killmonger <laughs> comes out on last turn and just wipes everybody out. I mean, I knew that was what was going to happen. I threw the fists up before we even ended the turn. <laughs> I was like, Hulk thing fist. And the guy's like, all right, Hulk thing fist. And I just watched him get obliterated. Mar Marvel boy for you. What was going on there? Yeah, I got him. I think I got him on my second key there. Instantly put him in with my Thanos deck because that has a ton of one cost cards. Eventually put him in my Savage Sword of Shulkanaut deck. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got a few one costs in there like a Black Knight. I had him in the Arishim deck at one point, which you're probably not supposed to put one cost cards in there, but I had Baku and Sunspot and somebody else. So I figured out we'll throw him in there too. I'm sure I tried him in a surfer deck at one point. Sometimes one point can make a difference. If he's oh, yeah. giving you up to three every turn, he's pretty good to ha have around. Plus, I don't think that's an on reveal or ongoing, so he can get around some of those things yep. that slow those down. Red Guardian was another favorite of mine because he's three cost, two power, and he's usually the lowest power. I watched Marvel Boy boost a squirrel sitting beside him, and I nailed Marvel Boy with the Red Guardian at one point. I was just laughing because I was like, well, okay, you're uh, <laughs> not funny. <laughs> Next up, Wiccan, four cost, seven power on reveal if you've spent all your energy this game plus two max energy. We cleared this up last time that we have to use all your energy going up to that turn and you can right. lay out Wiccan and get that plus two max energy. Um, I see him every once in a while. Uh, I will say that when I see him drop, he's pretty, I mean, helping you with plus two energy plus being seven power. That's not a lightweight. If you don't get it to work, he's still seven power. He's somebody that can at least be a problem in that lane. Uh, so like so, virtually every card in the game, he's better than the thing. <laughs> poor Ben Grimm. He'll never get his due. When he was there, I was kind of worried about, okay, what am I going to get into? What kind of craziness is going to happen? Because now they've got plus two energy for the next two, possibly three turns. And sometimes it seemed to help them out quite a bit. So what about you? Yeah, I think I might have gotten Wiccan on the on the first try. So don't think I used him a whole lot until I got, well, no, no, I, I did because Quicksilver and Domino. Or, or the way to set them up, then you just got to hope you get a three cost. I, I experimented a lot this season. I think I probably had him in the surfer deck at one point, maybe even messing around with Mr. Negative. It didn't stick very long until I got the next card. Then I tried him a, a little more. Good card, but not like, okay, I got Wicked in my deck. You're in trouble now. Or maybe I just haven't figured out the, the best combination for him. I don't know, but uh, not a bad card at, at, at all. I, I, I like using him. I, I was going to say you... You're right. I mean, this next card, speed, three cost, three power, ongoing, plus one power for each turn in which you spend all your energy. We mentioned this last time, like speed goes hand in hand with Wiccan. If you can get, it was, what were we saying? Oh, Quicksilver, Mr. Domino, speed, Wiccan. So speed definitely helps out prior to getting Wiccan. I usually saw him with Wiccan. Because I didn't get Wiccan, I didn't really feel like I needed to absolutely get speed. Now, how about you? Yes, he's a good card, but he works well with Wiccan and others. The advantage is if you're playing Quicksilver and Domino, you forego some of the other one and two cost cards, but then you can load it up with more powerful cards. I had a deck with Speed and Wiccan and then Quicksilver and Domino. I didn't keep it around very long because it, it, it was fun to play, but it, it was kind of hit or miss. An extra plus one, and he'd be good. I, I don't think I tried him in a surfer deck, but I tried every three cost card eventually in a surfer deck and mm -hmm. some non three cost cards. Just, I imagine it gets to be a challenge after you lay Wiccan down and you got to use all that energy to get the bonus for speed. So you got this plus yeah. two energy. Now I'm curious since you did play this, if you had sunspot out there and he uses that energy, that doesn't count towards that ability. Would you no. think? Okay. No, all it, right. It wouldn't. I never had a chance to figure out if that's the case or not. So because you don't have that energy or you still have that energy at the end of the turn and Sunspot just absorbs it up. I'm not very good at the data driven stuff. So I don't remember a lot about that. I was just like, oh, yeah, I'll get at least a plus four on speed and then I'll have a bunch of other energy. And then sometimes it was like, I got more energy than I need. You're right. So right. Uh, I, I, I couldn't get anything going very long. It was fun to do and, and fun when it hit, but I couldn't get anything going for very long with that one. 
All right, well, next up is Hulkling, six cost, 11 power. At the start of the game, copy the text of a random six cost card. We had a good time going through the six cost cards, trying to figure out which ones you hope get matched up with Hulkling and which ones you do not want Hulkling to get matched up with. I thought that if I was going to spend any keys to try and get, it would have been this one, but I didn't do it. Down to the last day, I'm looking at this thing going, should I try to get it? And I didn't. I've watched him copy a few people's abilities. I recently watched him get Red Hulk. What does Red Hulk, st- I can't even remember what Red Hulk starts out with. If, if they don't send all the, well, he starts on a 10, so okay. it's actually one, one, one less. More. And then if they don't spend all their energy, he gets a plus three. So, yeah, I mean, uh, again, you're kind of at the mercy of what one it copies. But uh, what did you run into anything? Yeah, I, I got him, too. I got the clean sweep. Dang. Yeah, I got them all with keys. Wow. I think that one took me three. But, yeah, I, I got him and <laughs> I put him on the Shulkanaut deck, replaced Red Hulk. But I, I don't know if he's going to stick. It's a fun concept, but I didn't end up using him a whole lot. Although I, I did see somebody online saying speed was the least exciting card in the game. That's not true. Now. I didn't oh, think really? it was that bad. It's hard to knock Red Hulk. If I'm going for a six cost, 10 or more power, it's hard to knock Red Hulk out of there. Yeah. And um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to think. I know, I know I did see a few people say they, I don't think it happened to me, but I, I did see a few people saying they got Hulkling copying Hulkling. Uh, did they really? Yeah. That's and funny. apparently it happened a few times. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, location, location, location. We have two locations this this season. Destroyed Mansion. Add a rock here and a vibranium to your hand. Uh, What's your speaking, favorite location ever? Uh, listen, we have our top five best locations, our top five worst locations. We need a top five meh locations. And uh-huh. this is number one. <laughs> <laughs> Destroyed Mansion is just like, okay, there's a rock. Great. Now I got a vibranium. Hooray. I absolutely endorse your idea of like, hey, it, that's perfect fodder for Marvel Boy because that is essentially what happened. I got Marvel Boy and was like, okay, well, Marvel Boy's going in my deck right now so I can help. You know, Destroyed Mansion actually is going to matter. Didn't play very much when this location was hot, so I can't really comment other than I was not impressed and I still wasn't impressed even when I got it. So, what about you? I like it because it's a location that doesn't make me go, uh. <laughs> At first, I was like, why would they just take a location out? But I don't miss the peak at all. Mm. It's better than the peak. It's better than Ego. So The peak was fun like, when it was featured. When it's not, because when you can expect it, then things get fun. But man, if it just shows up, gosh, yeah. So I am kind of glad they put it on the back burner. But go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted you. I don't understand why they got rid of the original Krakoa where it played one of your cards on one turn. That's so much better than Ego. Yeah. I mean, I love the idea that once in a while you can't control it, but I don't like losing the whole game. <laughs> so that's what Ego needs to be. But yeah. as far as the Destroy Mansion, it was to borrow a a phrase that I'm sure Mark Radulich has copyrighted. It was fine. The thing that was funny is I kept not recognizing it. I don't know if it was the sandbar or what, but I would be like, where that rock come from? <laughs> or that's just because I'm too easily distracted or because I'm trying to multitask when I should be focusing on something instead of trying to sneak in a game of Snap. But yeah, I would look down and be like, why is there a rock there? Who played debris? So yeah, it's a perfectly cromulent location to me. It just, you know, perfectly it's there. Cr- perfectly cromulent. Oh, all right. Then next up, we got to see this in our battle. That was Clubhouse. Fill this to give your cards at other locations plus one power. And my first game with this, I experimented. And I was like, oh, you know what would be great? And it occurred to me like Kitty Pride as the fourth thing. And I wonder if I could just continually spam to do <laughs> like continually. Yeah. Did not happen. Does not. Yeah. Does not work. Just does that one time and that's it. I did like it. When you have all your one cost guys out there and you're using Marvel Boy, you can fill that location up pretty easily. Did not get to Legion it as much as I wanted to. And I, I don't even know if I did. Um, but yeah, so there you go. That was my experience. How about you? Yeah. Played it a few times, but I don't know if I was trying to get bounties or what. I didn't adapt any decks to it. Eventually, I started using my MCU Hammer deck with the Thor and Beta Ray Bill and Gilgamesh. And then at one point I tried my uh, fill every location deck with it. It, it. it worked out well. I don't remember any time it really made a huge difference, but plus one for each card at your other locations is nothing to sneeze at. Right. Yeah. But I was, was more confused trying to figure out where it was in the comics. <laughs> 
I kept getting it confused with the new Warriors crash pad. Did we ever, did you, you never found out, right? Cause we were just talking about the last battle. I assume it's young Avengers related, probably from the series that I've heard good things about where kid Loki and Marvel boy join, but I haven't actually read. All right. That is our discussion and our thoughts on young Avengers. Thanks a lot for joining us. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for the next installment of snap material.